Hello and welcome to Fort Worth Central Station on the east side of downtown Fort Worth. Today we are going to be riding on Amtrak's Heartland Flyer from here up to Oklahoma City. Our journey today will take us north out of Texas and over the Red River before traveling across the Oklahoma Plains, covering a total of 206 miles between the two cities. The journey will take around 4 hours with 5 station stops and one longer smoke stop along the way. If you missed the previous leg where we rode on the Texas Eagle from San Antonio up to Fort Worth, click the links in the top right or in the description below to check out both parts 1 and 2 of that incredible journey. Fort Worth Central Station is Fort Worth's major transit hub, serving trains from Amtrak's Heartland Flyer and Texas Eagle, plus the Trinity Railway Express and TexRail services, in addition to the many local bus routes. Stepping inside, passengers are greeted by the high ceilings of the main waiting hall and the central tickets and information desk. Something I missed on my first visit to the station a few months ago is the map of downtown Fort Worth embedded in the floor just beyond the entrance. The simplified aerial view has major landmarks of downtown highlighted and numbered, including the Convention Center, Tarrant County Court, and of course, Fort Worth Central Station. Moving past the waiting area, we can head outside and onto the platforms. There are a total of three platforms here, with TexRail serving Platform 1, TRE on Platforms 1 and 2, and Amtrak on Platforms 2 and 3. Our train today, Amtrak 822, will be departing out of Platform 3, so we'll head on over. The southbound Heartland Flyer arrives in Fort Worth around noon, and after letting off its passengers, is shunted just beyond the platforms to be stored until the northbound run later that day. While we wait for our train to pull in, one of Trinity Metro's Texrail trains pulls in on its way to Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. We've taken a ride on both TRE and TexRail in the past, so if you missed those videos, click the links in the top right or in the description below to check them out. About 30 minutes before our scheduled departure time of 5.25pm, our train rolls out of storage and onto the platform before us. The Heartland Flyer runs an unusual consist, with three Superliner coaches capped off by two GE Genesis P42DC locomotives. Our train today is headed by Locomotive 72 with 207 trailing. The conductor comes around to open the doors and we can board the Heartland Flyer. There's a small section of seating downstairs, but we'll head upstairs to find a better seat. The interiors of today's train are still furnished in the older upholstery, but the amenities are just about identical to what we experienced on the Texas Eagle coming up here. The seating is incredibly spacious, with more than enough room to stretch out and get comfortable. Each seat has a footrest that extends down from the seat back. Most of these have become stuck with age, so be prepared to touch these with your hands if you really want to use them. The seat back pocket is decently sized and holds the safety information card. The standard tray table folds down from the seat back and then slides forward and backward to the user's liking. Again, the table hits my knees when fully extended, but it's not too big of an issue as you'll usually be reclined while using the table. Above each row are two lights, controlled by the white buttons in the middle of the panel. They're fairly bright and can be moved via the tabs on the sides. Each row also includes two outlets just below the window, but seeing as they're the only two in each row, they're pretty much inaccessible if you're seated in the aisle. 
As with all Superliner seats, each seat has two major methods of adjustment. The first is the leg rest that can be extended out from beneath the seat. The mechanism requires it to be moved by hand and then will lock into place automatically, however this one clearly wasn't cooperating and would not stay up no matter how hard I tried. The second adjustment is the backrest, which reclines rather far to give passengers the greatest freedom in adjusting their seats as possible. The cushioning on each seat is thick and comfortable, although the padding is certainly nearing the end of its life cycle as it gives way to just the slightest of touches. The seat covering hasn't fared much better over the years, with the faded pattern showing clear signs of wear. With the last passengers having boarded the train, our conductor closes the doors and our train departs for this four-hour journey up to Oklahoma City. Again, our train starts moving backward. Much like the Texas Eagle when departing San Antonio, the Heartland Flyer must reverse before transferring onto the correct track to head up to OKC. Fortunately, we only reverse a few feet before transferring onto the BNSF mainline that will take us north to Oklahoma. We leave the station behind, passing over the TRE and Texrail lines before leaving downtown and crossing over the Trinity River. As we head out of Fort Worth, let's take a quick look at some stats about our train. Taking us to Oklahoma City today is Amtrak Heartland Flyer number 822 and is led by GE Genesis P42DC locomotive number 72 with locomotive 207 bringing up the rear. Each P42DC is powered by GE's 7FDL16 V16 engine, producing 4,200 horsepower, hence the 42 in the name. P42DCs are rated for a top speed of 110 miles per hour, but track speeds limit them to a top speed of 80 miles per hour. Our consist today includes the two P42DCs and three Superliner coaches. Of these three, two are standard coach cars, while the center car is a combination coach and cafe car. While we've got a second, why don't you hit that subscribe button? It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. I have a lot of awesome content coming in the next few months, so stick around if you want to see more. Bathrooms on board are located downstairs, so we'll head to the staircase at the center of the car. There are a total of five bathrooms on each car, but we'll first take a look at one of the standard lavatories. The bathroom is tiny, and I mean tiny. There's almost no space in here to move around, let alone actually use the toilet. The sink works, but the high water pressure sends excess water everywhere, and the soap is almost empty. At least the paper products are well stocked, bar the cups, which I'm not sure anyone actually uses. To get an idea of just how small the bathroom is, my back is flat against the wall behind me in this shot, and my feet fill most of the floor space available. Looking at it, I think my knees would hit the bathroom door if I sat on the toilet, which is less than ideal. It's definitely not a great bathroom, but it would certainly do in a pinch. Taking a step back outside, we can have a look at some of the other interesting details and features that Superliners offer. Plastered on the wall just beyond the bathrooms is a poster featuring Amtrak Cascades parked up at Seattle's King Street Station. I plan on heading up to the Pacific Northwest at some point in the future to check out Amtrak Cascades and a few other rail lines in the area, so stick around if that's something you want to see. On the wall opposite is the usual Beech Grove Shops plaque where Superliner cars are serviced, 
a shop having served the U.S. Railways for just under 120 years. A welcome feature onboard Amtrak trains is the ice water station, which this time included cups, although the trash can below was missing. Before I boarded the train, I was hopeful that the windows at the back of each car would be unobstructed. However, the ends of both cars were covered by a protective sheet, blocking the view out the front and rear of the train. The cafe car soon opens for business with the welcome announcement pumped through the PA system. I couldn't resist the smooth talking of the cafe attendant, so I made my way over. Despite there being three cars on our train today, only the front and rear cars were open to passengers. The middle car was exclusively for the cafe, and passengers were asked not to sit on the upper level. I assume this was to keep passengers with different destinations separated, as all of the people in our car had a final destination of OKC. The cafe on board is unusual when compared to the usual setup that Amtrak runs with. On the Heartland Flyer, the cafe takes the place of the usual downstairs seating area with a smaller selection of snacks and drinks. There isn't any seating for passengers to eat in the cafe, so I headed back to my seat after grabbing a few things. I decided to go for a Snickers bar and a Coke for now as I wasn't too hungry, having had lunch in Fort Worth. I also snagged a pack of Amtrak playing cards as a small souvenir from my travels. As expected on Amtrak long distance routes, we must soon give way to a freight train heading south down the main line. Instead of using a traditional siding, we switched on to the South Y just north of Crum, Texas to let it pass. The freight train continued on south and we soon backed up off of the Y and continued our journey north. Our engineer kicked it into high gear and our train reached its top speed of 80 miles per hour. We soon left Texas behind, crossing over the Red River and into Oklahoma. Ardmore, Oklahoma is the only smoke stop on the Heartland Flyer, and we're only in Oklahoma for a few minutes before we roll into the station. Being a smoke stop means we'll have a few minutes here to get off and stretch our legs, so I headed downstairs and onto the platform. While we're stopped, we can take a minute to get a better look at the locomotives bringing us to Oklahoma City. At the rear of our train today is Locomotive 207, the last in Amtrak's numbering sequence for the P-42DCs. At the other end is Locomotive number 72. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. P-42DCs are beautiful locomotives, and I'll be sad to see them go as Amtrak replaces them with Siemens ALC-42s. Lying in wait just beyond our train are two BNSF EMD GP-35s standing by for their next assignment. Our conductor soon sounds the all aboard and we hop back on to continue our journey up north. The twilight has faded into night as we pull out of Ardmore, having had to wait for two freight trains to pass before carrying on. Shortly after pulling out of Ardmore, I decided we should head back downstairs to check out another one of those five bathrooms. The second facility we'll look at today is the combination bathroom and changing room. The bathroom side is pretty standard Amtrak stuff with the usual set of facilities. The sink works well, although the hot water side seems to be more under control than the high pressure cold side. 
Again, the soap is almost empty, but there's still enough to properly wash one's hands. The paper products are well stocked, with plenty of towels, tissues, and toilet paper. The cups dispenser actually has cups in it this time, unlike the other bathroom. The usual bathroom outlet is located just above the tissues and appears to be in good working order. The changing room half of the bathroom adds some much needed space over the usual size, with plenty of space to sit, stand, and change if need be. Overall, it's pretty nice for Amtrak. The Heartland landscape comes and goes as we continue north and soon reach the outskirts of Oklahoma City. The usual bouts of holds and delays for freight traffic come as we approach the city center, waiting long past our scheduled arrival time. After what felt like an hour of waiting for oncoming traffic, we finally crossed the Oklahoma River and made our way into the downtown station. Our train parks up and we can disembark into Oklahoma City. With a quick welcome from the signage around the station, we can head downstairs to find the exit. And with that, it's time to bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be back in Austin, Texas to fly with KLM on their direct route from Austin to Amsterdam on one of their gorgeous Boeing 787 Dreamliners. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. It's been amazing seeing all of the growth and support in the past few weeks, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for this channel. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.